it's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we're going to be reviewing the most controversial episode of Drag Race Down Under yet, and maybe the most controversial of the entire franchise. Our queens were challenged to create and market their very own brand of yeast bread, like Vegemite, and the runway category was Finest Sheila in the Bush. In addition to breaking those down, we'll also be discussing Scarlett Adams' admission of past cultural appropriation and use of blackface in performances, taking a look at Art Simone's and Karen from Finance's past controversies that have resurfaced online, and then finally looking at how some of our queens responded to this episode. Also, as you can probably hear, I'm suffering from a bit of a cold, so please excuse my nasaliness today, and just know that Bussy Queen will be back. First up, serving Edgar Allan Poe on the runway. It's Electra Shock. She says her runway is inspired by the Huya bird, which is a now extinct species once native to New Zealand. This look is chic, gender bent, and I think most importantly, makes you ask questions. She has all the hallmarks of what is an amazing runway here. I think she did a great job of giving the judges and us as viewers something that we weren't expecting, as well as doing something that was a great homage to her home country. And you know what they say, a Huya bird in the hand is worth two Huya birds in the bush. Quoth the raven, this look is her success continued in the main challenge. Her spread is called Topped by Busted Spreads, which is a spread containing charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent to get her to the top of the competition. It was a really meta take on this challenge that allowed her to both make fun of herself and also manifest her way into the top placement this week. She also did a great job of being absolutely filthy, but taking precaution to, you know, disguise her jokes in a... TV-friendly way, as Michelle would say. I definitely think that subtleness is what allowed her to succeed. This was an obvious hot. Next up, she's finally left her chrysalis, and wow, she looks amazing. It's Kitamine. Her runway is a butterfly extravaganza, and no butterflies were harmed in the making of this look. I hope. The back collar piece behind her head is my favorite part. It kind of reminds me of that headpiece that Shangela wore in her Mariah Carey lip sync thing that she did, which reminds me of the time that Scarlet Envy thought that Mariah Carey's fans were called butterflies and not lambs. And of course also of Jasmine Master's cocoon look and, well, need I say it, Asia O'Hara's butterfly disaster in the finale. <laughs> Butterflies have had an interesting history on RuPaul's Drag Race, but that's for another video. Anyways, I really can't give enough praise to this look. I think the glitter eyebrows and lips are amazing. She looks pretty, and the dress itself is just really well made. The butterflies are patterned and glued in such a way that it really like cinches in her waist and gives her a great silhouette. A true metamorphosis, this look is hot. Her ad was for a yeast bread called Yeasty Nuts. Firstly, I love that she used a divine reference in the second part of her ad. It reminded me that the TikTok crowd has been learning who divine is recently. <laughs> Everyone now, condone first degree murder. Advocate cannibalism. Eat shit. Filth are my politics. Filth is my life. Gotta educate the children somehow, right? However, I'm not sure how she got to Divine from the beginning of her ad, because initially she was like, oh, this is for all my donut filling lovers looking for new fillings for their donut holes. You know, I think kind of making a joke about holes getting filled. But then the Divine thing was a reference to Divine eating dog poo, and I'm just not totally sure how those two things connected, but it was still funny. I think mostly because she was just like shoving it up her nose and in her mouth and making a complete fool of herself, so she was successful at least in that realm, even if the ad was a little unclear. This ad was a mess, yes, but it also was a hot mess. Next up, she's taking us back to the year 1900. It's Maxi Shield. She says her runway is given a movie from 1975 that tells the story of a school teacher and her classroom going to have a picnic at Hanging Rock in the year 1900. They disappear and they're never heard from again. The interesting element of all of this is that no one knows if this was a real event or purely fictional. And yes, I did just learn all of that from Wikipedia. <laughs> I do love a good reference, especially when they teach me something new. So for that, I want to give Maxie a hat. However, 
I have to say that when references are done on the runway for RuPaul's Drag Race, I think the queens have to be really careful that they don't come off as costumey. And ultimately, I think this one kind of does. It just wasn't elevated enough. Like, it looks like she plucked this directly from the movie instead of transforming it into something for Maxi. For example, let's take a look at Utica's curtain look from Carol Burnett's Went With The Wind comedy sketch. It's transformative and makes the reference without being an exact copy of the thing she's referencing. I think there was plenty of room here for Maxie to transform this, and because she didn't, I'm going to give this a rat. Her spread was called Hornbag Yeast Concentrate, which according to the ad was designed to, well, turn you into a hornbag and get you a man. Think I need some of that. I do agree with the judges here that there was definitely room in the ad for her to be funnier. She kind of just sat in the chair and didn't do much else, but she did something a lot of the other girls didn't. She sold a product with a clear purpose. I knew exactly what it was for. So while it wasn't as slappy or knee funny as Kita's or Electra's, at least it made sense. So for that reason, I'm gonna leave this one at a warming up. Next up, she does day shifts at the office and night shifts on the fireman's pole. She says she's serving Coco Chanel does the Country Fire Association. Look, I think the message behind this runway is beautiful, but it is ugly as sin. I'm so sorry. I'm not buying that Chanel would put something like this on a runway. The material used to construct it doesn't read well, maybe it's the color, and the fit overall just seems way too baggy on her body. And the plastic bedazzled fireman's hat doesn't do a lot to elevate this look either. In general, this style is very much in the essence of Karen from Binance, but she normally has a way of kind of modernizing some of the cuts and styles that she pulls from, and I don't think that was done properly for this specific look. So for me tonight, this look is a rat. In her ad, she was selling a yeast spread called Discharge. Mm-hmm. Discharge. The judges acted like this was really funny. Personally, I didn't laugh. It felt really, really flat to me. It was like the only joke there was her saying the word discharge over and over just to be unsettling. I think her ad failed to achieve even the bare minimum of what a marketing commercial should do, and that is to tell the viewer why they want to buy something. She gave no real use cases for her yeast spread or what would make somebody want it. For me, this ad deserves a discharge from the competition. It's a Fact. Overall, I think there's something really interesting happening with Karen in this competition. I believe she's an extremely talented queen, but with all due respect, she failed to deliver in the last Recycle Challenge, wasn't funny in Snatch Game, her lyrics fell flat in the performance verse that they wrote, and now this. It just seems that no matter what Karen does, they are hellbent on pushing her to the top of the competition. I think it's also really interesting they chose to bring up Scarlett's blackface and cultural appropriation in her past, yet failed to mention Karen's, and then criticized its etc et for being too on the nose while Karen just sold a product called Discharge. Favoritism on Drag Race? I never. More on those topics later though. Next up, we have a two-in-one special. It's Art Simone. The first part of her look is this super chic coat and cork hat, which is a traditional part of Australian garb, apparently used to keep insects away. Like the swinging corks would basically keep the flies from buzzing around your face. She takes all that off and reveals to a cafe night illusion, which I thought was a Wonderful reference. Remember, we just saw her done by Tace in the UK Series 2 Snatch Game. She's giving me camp, fashion, and reveals all wrapped into one runway, which is amazing, and fully transformed her references to put her art stamp on them. Run this look up my flagpole. It's hot. <laughs> However, her spread left me feeling a bit yanked. It's called Arts Yeasty Yank Extract. And by the way, yank is a pejorative term used for Americans in Australia, which is great. I don't really care if people are making fun of Americans at all. I think that's lovely. However, I watched the ad and in my notes, I literally just wrote, what the hell happened? Like, she looks great in it, but it took me a few watches to realize that the yeast was literally supposed to extract Yanks, aka Americans, from being, I guess, in close proximity of... Australians? Like she gave the example of the annoying tourist in the beginning and then spent I think way too long in the kitchen telling us about how to make it which was mostly bleeped out and then there was just no payoff at the end of the ad like how do you use it? Do you eat it? Rub it on yourself? Spray it at people? Do you boof it? I don't know. She didn't tell us. The judges seemed to like it but Reese did bring up that it was overall confusing and he was unsure about what happened which I'm not sure if you guys have noticed but I feel like there is often a lot of disagreement between Reese and Rue and Michelle but they kind of like hide it or just like flash right over it? I don't know. Anyways, I'm yanking this product off the shelf. It's a rat. 
Next out of the bush is etc etc. On the runway, Etc. is wearing a beautiful eucalyptus tree coat with red hair and gloves symbolizing the red flowers that are found on the tree. It reveals to a burnt tree stump and then out of her chest, she pulls out new life. She literally told like the circle of life story on this runway. It's amazing. And then the only real critique we see on this look is that the guest judge was like, I wish you kept your coat on longer. I was like, y'all can't appreciate the high fashion camp drag happening here. <laughs> so sad because this look is red, as for her yeast, it's for a spread starting with the letter P. You can't say that full word on YouTube or that is demonetization central. The judges acted like they hated it, but hear me out because I think it was actually one of the best ads. Firstly, she gave us clear reasons to buy her product. It's a neurotoxin and an oven cleaner. <laughs> She had clever jokes that were plays on common words like P, it's number one, not number two. Plus she had side gags. It was ridiculous and fun. Instead of recognizing how clever the ad was, Rue said it was too on the nose and Michelle said there are some lines we don't cross on television. I was like, um, hello, are we watching the same show? Y'all were totally fine with Karen doing discharge this, discharge that, but the second we're talking about P, that's too far? And this is crossing a line on the same show that RuPaul makes fisting jokes on every other episode? Like, are we living in the same reality? Because I don't think we are. To the judges, I say pee off. This ad was hot. <laughs> and finally, the queen of controversy today, Scarlett Adams. Her runway look is inspired by this iconic scene from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, where she's on top of the bus and this beautiful gown is flowing behind them. By the way, if you're watching Drag Race and haven't seen this and other classics like To Wong Fu and Paris is Burning, well, why, what are you doing? Pause this and go watch them and then come back. I have no complaints about the garment that Scarlett is wearing tonight. It's as hot as the desert itself. However, her ad, I think, deserves a little more scrutiny. It's for a yeast spread called Snatch, which is designed to, well, snatch your snatch. I will say, technically speaking, the ad was well done. She had a product that had a clear use case and told us why, as consumers, we would want to buy it and how it's going to help us. And she wrote plenty of jokes for the ad. However, we are in 2021, and her entire skit relied on making fun of a body part that she does not have. Like, it kind of just felt like a really cringy attack on that specific woman's body part. And I think as drag performers that are cis men dressing up as women, we have a duty to make sure that our drag is not making fun of women, but instead celebrating them. So as this ad was executed, it was not in good taste at all. Frankly, it was kind of offensive. And the thing is, she could have done this entire ad from the perspective of tucking the body part that she does have and making fun of that body part. That would have been, I think, totally acceptable. And I do think that it was obviously way more over the line than et cetera's. Like, I feel similarly to this one and how it sort of relied on making fun of a female body part as I do about Karen's. They both just kind of we're in bad taste. A rat indeed. Now let's get into the controversy. The drama. But in all seriousness, I do want to give you a little content warning. The rest of the video is serious in nature and covers sensitive topics. In the workroom of today's episode, the queens are discussing their regrets and Scarlett brings up her past of doing blackface and incorporating cultural appropriation into her performances. The discussion gets a little heated and etc. brings up the importance of making sure that apologies have actions that show those apologies are serious. The next time we hear about it is on the runway. After the critiques, RuPaul is just kind of out of nowhere like, Scarlett, it's come to my attention that there are photos of you online performing in blackface, as if she had literally just received a message in her ear from the producers that they found it in that moment. Rue then gives Scarlett a chance to apologize for her past, which she does, and RuPaul forgives her, saying, I'm sure there are people that would want me to cancel you, but I'd rather this be a lesson in humility and accountability. And then that's all we hear about it for the rest of the episode. It felt rushed and weird and unfinished. After the episode, though, is when things started getting a little little crazy online. Scarlett posted a link to an apology video on her Instagram. It starts off with Scarlett elaborating about what had happened, saying this. There are a lot of things from my past that I am not proud of. Things I did, geisha makeup, wearing Native American headdresses, cultural appropriation, performances which ridiculed 
accents and um, blackface. She further elaborates saying this. For these things, I am deeply ashamed. I'm embarrassed and I cannot apologize enough for the hurt that was caused from those acts. And then later includes information in the video about what she's done to atone for her actions. Uh, I was the first person at the court hotel to start doing the acknowledgement of country. I also uh, learnt Auslan, which is Australian Sign Language, so that I could include deaf people in on uh, the acknowledgement of country. I created a document that all performers who came to the court had to sign, which said that performances that included cultural appropriation would not be tolerated. In producing Friday night production shows at the Court Hotel, I made sure to include POC or trans artists. Eight out of the nine shows that I ever produced there featured either a POC artist or a trans artist or often both. I created a digital drag show with all of the proceeds from that going towards um, Black Lives Matter. The money that I made from my past problematic performances I've donated and I continue to donate to pay the rent every month. I've had lots of in-person conversations with people of First Nation communities as well as local BIPOC performers and I have participated in Zoom calls around Australia with leaders in BIPOC. When Scarlett's past was originally resurfacing online, so was Karen from Finances. It was discovered that she once had a collection of Gollywog dolls and a tattoo of one of those dolls like on her leg somewhere. She released an official apology on Instagram saying this. I would like to formally apologize for a part of my past, something that I've long been remorseful for and admittedly ashamed to share. 11 years ago, I had a collection of Gollywog dolls, a collection that began when I was two, and I made the decision to have one of those dolls tattooed. I can't change the past, but I can and will work on the present and do better in the future. Additionally, after this episode aired, Art Simone was accused of doing blackface and incorporating cultural appropriation into her performances. She immediately jumped onto Twitter to address these accusations saying, this. Just wanting to jump on here and acknowledge that there are images starting to circulate. They are of an old show poster for a show called Suntan. There are also old images of me wearing a kimono and headpiece. For years, Australian drag has ridden the line between cultural appropriation and appreciation. I learned that my appreciation could be seen as appropriation. I learned and grew and I stopped wearing that costume. I am forever learning and growing and doing my best to be a figurehead for my community. I'm so grateful to the people I have around me for their different eyes and experiences in the world. She also shared the original un photoshopped version of herself in the suntan poster where you can see that her skin was of natural color. So this is pretty heavy stuff and there really is no textbook written about how to deal with situations like this, but I can say that sending and spreading hate online isn't uh, the best way to deal with any of this. I think this is really a time to look towards the BIPOC community and seeing what they're saying and seeing how we can help according to those people that have been marginalized. So because of lack of experience, I can't really speak on racism in Australia, but I can say that as an American, we have a very deep history of racism and blackface and cultural appropriation being perpetuated and normalized by the media at large. The past in a lot of cases is not pretty, but it can be learned from. Personally, I always look to evaluate someone's character based on who they are today and what they're doing now instead of who they maybe once were. I think it's better to have a society that allows people to grow and change instead of continually punishing them for all eternity. So with all that said, I do have a little conspiracy theory related to this episode if you're with me. Basically, my theory is that the producers used Scarlet as a pawn and attempt to get positive ratings, i.e. they were looking for that Emmy moment. Firstly, we know that conversations in the workroom are prompted by the producers. And all of this happened on an episode that aired on May 29th, which is in the middle of Australia's annual Reconciliation Week, occurring every year from May 27th to June 3rd, which by the way is a national celebration, quote, building on the respectful relationships shared by the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and other Australians. Basically, it's a time to acknowledge the mistreatment of indigenous peoples by white people in Australia. And we also know that Scarlet's runway referenced Queen of the Desert. In that movie, the tour bus breaks down, which leads to a scene where the queens and a group of indigenous people have a little heartfelt moment relating to one another, and it's really a beautiful moment between two groups of marginalized people. But I don't think the Priscilla reference was a coincidence considering the topics discussed during the episode, the focus on Scarlet, and the air date.
date. And the editing, as we saw, tells the rest of the story. We didn't get a resolution between Scarlet and the other queens. The queen that was most critical on her, etc., was sent home. And Art Simone, in a now-deleted tweet, said, I wonder why they cut out Untucked, seemingly hinting that there was indeed more to the story. But by cutting that out, the show contained the narrative of reconciliation and wrapped it in a nice little bow with RuPaul being the arbiter of truth in this moment. I also want to point out that the overall theme of reconciliation felt soured by the two contestants that were indigenous peoples of color to Australia were already eliminated, and in the past episode, Art was brought back without also extending the same opportunities for those two people to also return to the competition. Like, it just felt wrong that the people who were marginalized by performances like Scarlet did in the past were not in the room during all of this to help facilitate conversation. At bare minimum, they could have brought Coco and Jojo back into Untucked or something and had a moment in there where they really discussed things on a deeper level. Anyways, let me know what you think. Was this all a coincidence or was it planned? Our well-deserved winner this week is Electra Shock. And our bottom two are Etc. and Maxi. Personally, I definitely would have put Karen in the bottom this week. And then the other spot, I think you could argue between Maxi, Karen, Scarlet, and Art. And I did do a lip sync reaction to this available exclusively on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. Click the link in the description to join today and get exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, exclusive videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. Our episode wraps up with Etc. wrongly going home. This bitch was robbed. My hottest... This week goes to etc etc. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot and this week they've chosen Electra Shock. I want to say thanks so much for watching this video and give a special shout out to Aiden, Alial, Anthony, Bradley, Cameron, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Claire Moosdale, Clark, Georgia Leather, Evan, Fabio, Fractalize, Freddy, GJ Bearclaw, Got the Morbs, Goaty B, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kiki and John, Madam Muffy, Maddie Morissette, Nathan, Opal, Queen Sassy Canista, Ron, Shannon, Shazzy, Sky, Tammy Pitt, Tina, Thomas, Timotheus, Timothy, Tony, Unique, Vendetta, and Really? Who are all supporting me at my hottest hot tier. And Angel, Caroline, Cyrus, Felicia, Hope, JB, Joseph, JB in Dallas, Laura, Nurse Luca, Matthew, Mike, Robert, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Stephen, Tom, and Triton, who were all supporting me on Patreon at my Bussy Quinn Collector tier. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see y'all next time. Love ya. Bye.